Hello, hello, everybody. How are you? Happy Monday. <clears throat> Happy Monday, Monday. It's Makeup Monday. Okay, guys, so um, I wanted to go over today six pro tips on how to um, get the fl most flawless application if you have mature skin um, or um, textured skin, that kind of thing. Um, so I find that this these tips and tricks have been really useful. I struggle with mature skin. So, um, these are going to be very, very, very helpful tips. So, um, it's probably no surprise when I tell you that skincare is going to be the most important thing when it comes to, um, hydrating your skin. Um, it's going to be the most important thing when it comes to, um, reducing like the creepiness and that kind of thing. So, um, I always suggest, um, hi Melissa. Um, so I always suggest making sure that you're prepping and priming your skin correctly. Now, one of the things that I have learned is that, um, a gripping primer for mature skin is really, really effective. Um, and that's the first thing that I want you guys to know is, Find yourself a really good gripping primer. Now, I said skincare is really important. Um, so, obviously, a cleanser and all of your serums and that kind of thing. But gripping primer, you did? That's awesome. Um, I'm excited for you to try all that stuff. Um, especially the pads. I call them maxi pads, but the pads. <laughs> um, so, gripping primer is really, really, really important. Um, so for example, when you get Hi Krista, a gripping primer is going to allow your foundation to, um, kind of, um, stick to it, stay to it. Um, but finding the correct gripping primer is going to be key for you. Now, um, for me as a mature skinned woman, having one that is a moisturizer, a primer and an SPF is super important. And the reason why I say that is because with mature skin, it's really important to be using SPF every single day. Um, you want to find a good hydrating moisturizer, but you also want it to be a, a primer, like a gripping primer. So I'm using one that has all three of those in one. The great part about it is that it doesn't have any um, chemical. It actually has um, zinc oxide in it which is super, super, super important. Um, and if you use SPF every day, make sure you comment below because it makes me happy um, to know that people are using SPF. Um, so I like to take it and I like to use like a, a, a foundation painter's brush. And as you can see, as I'm putting it on, it's kind of giving that gripping effect to it. So when you apply your foundation, it's going to lay better and it's really important be to use a primer in general. If you're not using it, um, what is that called? It is called perfect sunscreen. I always call it perfect SPF, but it's perfect sunscreen, perfect facial sunscreen. Um, but it has, Hey Nicole, it has, um, chicory root in it. I just saw your message, Nicole. I was just getting ready to message you, but I'm trying to get my live done. <laughs> Um, cause I have a meeting tonight. Um, so it has chicory root in it, which is really important when it comes to anti-aging. It helps with collagen production and it plumps the skin as well. So if you look here, you can see where it's been applied to the skin. Um, but it has like that gripping, that gripping effect to your skin. Now, um, so I suggest finding an SPF moisturizer and primer that's going to do all that for you. The less you have to use on your skin, I find the better people are because I find people don't stick with tons of products, which is totally understandable, um, especially with how little time that we have on our hands. Um, but you can already see um, how it is kind of going down. Um, the next thing is um, foundation. Okay. So as a mature skinned woman, you want to stay away from liquid watery based foundations. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of women tend to 
lean to um, because they can use their hands. They can use it. it, um, it Honestly, it was conditioned to us. Like that was the big thing with CoverGirl and all that stuff when it came out um, was to use a um, watery base, liquidy base foundation. Um, you want to find something that's very hydrating. Um, what I have found um, for mature skin is that more of a cream base um, foundation tends to lay a lot nicer on um, mature skin as long as you are using a good primer and you're doing the proper skincare. Um, no foundation is going to go on you correctly or lay correctly on you if you're not using proper skincare. Um, it's kind of like trying to bake a cake and if you don't put all the ingredients, A, it's not going to taste good, but B, if you don't let it like cool down, then it's going to be like rubbing it and, and pulling it. So you can't really cover a cake um, if it's not properly um, done. And also, are you trying to rake your, are you trying to water your grass without rake, without removing your leaves? Like proper skincare is going to be key. So what I like to do is I'm going to take a cream based foundation because that's all I use. I used to wear liquids, that kind of thing, and it just did not jive with me. Um, so I like to take this little spatula, my metal one I can't find, but, um, and what's nice is with this primer, moisturizer, and SPF that I have, um, you can actually mix it in. However, I like to um, apply it first. So um, I tend to use too much foundation, so I have found that it's easier for me to just take it from here and then I can take it and then um, I can get it all nice and warmed up. Now with cream-based foundations, you're gonna notice that it's um, more of a waxier, um, Hi Charlotte, it's more of a waxier blend to it, um, which is what makes it so nice and hydrating. Um, however, you have to warm it up, okay? So um, it's not like Scentsy Wax, so don't get me wrong there. Somebody asked me if it was like Scentsy Wax and I'm like, no, <laughs> it's not like Scentsy Wax. So it's just a cream, so it glides really nice and easy, but I love the fact that this specific one that I have does have higher pigmentation. Now I didn't take very much off of there. However, um, it's really nice because then I don't have to use tons. So I like to kind of apply it with this little painter's brush. It allows me to go in and just kind of glide on top of it. And that's, that's the next one is you wanna make sure you're applying your foundation with a really good brush and or sponge. Now, what I have found with people with sponges is that they tend to, to, <laughs> God, um, they tend to get a little sponge happy, okay? Unfortunately, yes, I have been down that road, okay? And it's no fun um, because then you start to look kind of goofy, right? So you wanna make sure you're using the proper utensil tool I call it utensil, um, the proper tool to um, apply because application is key when it comes to um, applying your foundation, okay? So as you can see here, I've applied that moisturizer, primer, SPF. The skin is nice and prepped. I used a little bit of a darker one today so you guys could see the exaggeration this is not my natural color, as you can see. Um, I wear a little bit lighter, but I wanted you guys to kind of see um, the difference. I wanted you to see the difference. So yes, it is an exaggerated foundation color today. <laughs> um, but what I like is that I don't have to use as much. I'm just taking a little tiny bit because I didn't put any down there. And I wanna make sure that you guys are well aware that this is not my color. It's very, very um, off color for me. Okay, so again, proper moisturization, primer, 
um, hydrating foundation. Um, kind of stay away from the watery, um, liquidy kinds because a lot of them have um, a higher pH. So when you start to apply that to the skin, it has um, iron oxide in it. And so typically what you're gonna find with a lot of liquidy foundations, watery based foundations, is that they're going to oxidize on the skin. So if you've ever had the issue where your skin or your foundation turns a funky color by the end of the day, or you get this line like you saw on my face a little bit, um, that's when the air hits the foundation. Um, there's many other um, things that can be, um, that can be kind of, um, the cause, but that's one of the most common causes. Kind of think of it as like if you have an avocado or a banana and the banana turns like brown, turns gross, that is oxidization and makeup can do that as well. Um, the other thing is stay away from powders. Powders can tend to exacerbate, unfortunately, um, our, our, um, in issues. So what I like to do is I like to take like a little powder puff um, and some translucent powder and I just like to pat it in there and I just like to go in and I like to pat. Okay. Now everybody should be using some sort of translucent powder, setting powder, because that's going to be really important. Um, but also you don't need to bake. Unfortunately, mature skinned women, your days of baking underneath your eye are no bueno. Like you don't want to do it. Okay. <laughs> you want to stay away from it. I always kind of, um, put more, a little bit more translucent in these areas because I tend to be a little bit more oily or skinned. Okay. But you can see how this powder puff really helps with, um, setting. Okay. Now, um, as you can see, you want to stick with like the middle of the face first. You saw me apply it into these areas and then I just kind of moved it out. That's really important. Um, you want to make sure that you, um, start with like your concealers and do your concealers. Ooh, one of my hairs kind of got in there. Um, I like to just take my concealers and apply a little bit over in here and just a little bit over in here. I sneeze and I just like to take that brush and then I can go in and then I can pat it in. Cream base for your concealers is going to be your best friend if you have mature skin. Okay. Um, that's just how it goes. That's just how it's going to be. Um, cream base is just going to be your friend just all around. I'm just applying some more of that concealer just so it looks a little bit more. Now I'm gonna show you guys if you use like a, a sponge, how much um, the difference is too. And you can just kind of go in. Okay, so if you don't want any creasing, creamy found or creamy concealer is gonna be your friend too. Okay, so um, that's the other one. Um, now the other thing that is great is you want to stick with like cream, like when you're looking for foundations, anything that says like dewy or glowy is going to be really good. Stay away from matte foundations. Unfortunately, matte foundations is not a mature skin person's um, friend. Now, some of you may say, well, I have really oily skin. Well, there's things that you can do for that, like a, um, a setting spray that is meant for oily skin. Okay. So like the one that I use on my face is for oily skin. It actually has a patent of time release temperature control. So as my skin starts to possibly, um, get overheated, oily, it actually has these little cooling balls that suck that in. So it also is going to help regulate that oil production during the day. So that's really important. Um, and like I said, reducing the powder is gonna be key. 
but staying away from powders and that kind of thing, but only using a little bit of the translucent powder is going to be key. So those are my six pro tips. Um, if you would like my um, cheat sheet on how to, <laughs> um, how to contour and highlight, um, like a boss, make sure that you comment below and I will get you that information for free. So I hope you guys have a great day and a happy Monday and remember kindness is trending. So be kind and don't forget to three bubbles up there so you can see me every time I pop on. So I'll see you guys later.